Now I'm going to uh, briefly talk about the experience card evangelism assignment and then the, how to help a problem, uh, help a person with problem. Okay, first, experience God evangelism. Many of you stop at praying. The experience God evangelism, the most important part is praying and after what, afterwards you say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? So that's the most important part, that we ask what happened. And then if the person says he experienced something, then we tell them the Bible verses. That you have experienced the peace, love, comfort, healing, joy, freedom of Jesus. So, and then, if God has blessed you like this, do you want Jesus to bless, to bless you more for your whole lifetime and forever? And if He's willing, then you tell the gospel. This last part. But a number of you, actually, I'm saying those people copy from each other. They all end before the prayer or end at the prayer and didn't say anything after the prayer. Now, I go through this again. I know it could be difficult for you. If you have a cell phone that has a recording function, you can actually record. You know that your cell phone, if you have a cell phone, you can record. Okay. Experience God evangelism. First point is build up a relationship with someone and listen to the person. And then respond to his feelings and his needs. And then share with him our similar problem or someone else similar problem. And how we were healed by Jesus or in a prayer. Yes? Okay. Now, which one do I repeat? Huh? Second point is respond to his feelings and difficulties. And then number three, share our similar experiences or someone else similar experience so someone else or we have this experience we share and then invites the person to pray would you like me to pray for you to experience the help from God and after the prayer we say please keep your eyes closed Have you experienced anything during the prayer? If the person said he has experienced something, then we quote the Bible verses, then we quote the Bible verses to say that this is what the Bible has promised. And if you have experienced the blessing of God in the prayer, if you have ex experienced the blessing of God during the prayer, do you want God to bless your whole life and forever?
Do clear as thunder. Again, Say it again. Do clear as thunder. Again, do clear as thunder. 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 This is not how you say. You say, have you experienced anything during the prayer? Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then if he said, I feel peaceful, I feel the burdens go away, then you quote the Bible verses. You don't ask, have you experienced a blessing? Because that means you are telling them, say it's a blessing. So what have you have you experienced anything during the prayer? Or if he doesn't understand experience, then you can say, did you feel anything during the prayer? And then the next one I already said that, so we, do you want God to continue bless your whole life and for eternity? And then, if he's willing, then you explain the gospel. The gospel is, Jesus is God. God loves us so much. Now, Jesus is God and he is also the son of God. God loves us so much, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to come to the world and die for us. Die for our sins. So He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to come to the world to die for our sins. And then he rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. And then he rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. Do you want Jesus to forgive your sins and give you eternal life. Do you want Jesus to forgive your sins and give you eternal life? And if he's willing, then we pray with them. The last one. If he's willing, then we'll pray with them to confess our sins and trust in Jesus as our Savior. To confess our sins and trust in Jesus as our Savior. And then we will also help this person to continue to follow Jesus. And then we will help this person to continue to follow Jesus. Okay, so this is the experience God evangelism. And then the third assignment, how do you handle a sin problem or a person problem. What I mean is, handle your own sin. How do you overcome a certain sin? How do you overcome a certain sin? My expectation is that you will use the five steps of victory. Some people answer and say, if someone has sinned, I will talk to them, quoting Matthew 18. And then a few people copy from that, all saying the same thing. <laughs> 
Preis bedeutet. Now, um, the same problem, and I don't expect you not just to write the five steps for victory, but you actually explain. For instance, when we are aware we have some sinful thoughts, now this is the answer. I'm, when we are aware of some sinful thoughts, for instance, and then you use an example, for instance, we might have anger or lust or laziness or depression. So when we have any of these sinful thoughts, then we realize that the sinful thought is destructive. It can destroy my life. It can take away the blessings of God. It can destroy my life and it can destroy, it can take away the blessings of God. And then we ask ourselves, what does the Bible tell us to do? So if you're talking about anger, then the Bible says that we can have the peace of the Lord and the anger of a man doesn't accomplish God's plan, God's will. It doesn't accomplish God's will. So we pray to God, so we know that we need the peace of God. Now if it is lust, and we know that lust is adultery. So we hate the sin, and we reject the sin. And then if we have greed, maybe trying to steal some money, and then we'll say, if we steal the money, actually I'm stealing curses upon myself. If we steal money, do you believe that? The one who stole the cell phone from Bishop is stealing curses upon himself. No one can run away from God's eyes. So, the big, so what does the Bible say? And then, number four, we pray for forgiveness. Please forgive my sinful thought. And please give me strength. Ask for strength from the Lord to overcome it. And then, choose to obey. I choose to have compassion on the person, understand his suffering, and so I choose to bless him and forgive him and not to be angry with him. Now each for each instance is different. For instance, if we have lust, we choose not to look at the sexy woman or think about the sexy woman. But we pray to the Lord to have strength to have a pure heart and then we choose to put down this lustful thoughts so whatever it is or when we were about to fight or argue with someone we choose to say argument is going to destroy my life and ruin the relationship so I will put down their uh, desire to argue and whatever we say he doesn't want to accept I just let go I don't have to argue I say my point and let him think about it so it's handling a sin now if you handle someone's problem Again, it's using the five steps of victory. Aware that someone is saying something negative to me. Someone is angry with me. Someone is trying to hurt me. 
aware. And then I'm aware of my unhappy feelings. I'm un aware of my unhappy feelings or my anger toward him. And then I realize it is what? Some of the T. It's destructive. So I want to stop this. And then what does the Bible say? The Bible say, if the Lord is for me, I'm not afraid. What can people do to me? That's Psalm 118 verse 6. What can they do to me? They cannot take away God's blessings. So I don't have to be angry or affected by Him. And then I pray for forgiveness because even when we have the sinful thought, that's already a sin. We ask God to forgive, but we want to stop it there. And then ask for strength. And then number five, we choose to speak nicely to the person, choose to put down the anger. I don't have to be angry. It is his problem. I don't want to eat the garbage from his mouth. I just want to say thank you for reminding me and say nice things to the person and I choose not to be angry. So this is how to handle a person's problem. If the person is arguing with me, I would say, okay, thank you for telling me. I'll think about it. I'll work on it. Thank you. Yes. Instead of arguing. Okay. So handle a person's problem. That's what I mean. You understand? So to say the process, using the five steps of victory to describe each step, how you handle a sin or a person's problem. And then I hope you get used to it. And then when someone yells at you, then you learn how to handle it. Let me ask you, did someone say something unpleasant to you last night when you, after you went home? Did someone say something unpleasant to you and make you feel unhappy? Did you have to use this five steps to victory? Anyone? When you go home, did someone try to hurt you? And did you try to do something? Did you try to handle it? And also this morning when you wake up, do you feel tired? Do you feel unhappy? Do you try to handle it with the five steps of victory? Okay, now, any question? Any question? Go away? Yes. Can you go away? Can you go away? Say it again. Can you please go away? Say you repeat. The abuse go away? Say you repeat it. Say you repeat the process. Say you repeat it. Go away. Which part? Which part? All the process. Go away. He said, can you please go over it? <laughs> you mean handle people? Yeah, change the whole process again. Okay, it's different for each person, each situation. For instance, you are aware someone is attacking you, cursing you, saying something unpleasant to us. And then we feel unhappy inside. Number two. So now, Basically, you want the idea. You don't need to write down every sentence. It's basically, you realize that I'm aware someone is being unpleasant to me or attacking me. And then I feel unhappy because of that. And then number two, and I believe from the Bible that it's destructive. It will destroy my life. And number three, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who persecute you. So we pray for those, pray for them, and, and, have, uh, and bless them. And number four, we pray for forgiveness and for the strength to overcome it. And then number five, I choose to calm myself down. Jesus loves me. It doesn't matter. He cannot take away the my blessings I don't have to take these words I don't have to eat the garbage my life is precious my life can go higher and higher so I don't want to be affected by him so I can let go and bless him 
So this is now for each situation it could be different. You know? yes. We're saying no one can take away the blessings of God. He cannot really hurt me. Jesus said that if someone kill your body and cannot kill your soul, do not be afraid of them. Yes. But only he who can kill your body yes. and your soul be afraid of them. Now what does that mean? If someone just take away some money or hurt your body, they, they cannot hurt your soul. But if we let them hurt the soul, that means we let them cause us to be angry and hate them and, and don't forgive them, then they are taking also our salvation with Him. That we have to be afraid. So we learn not to be affected by people so that we don't get angry. Because we get angry, now that's what I heard in many discussions yesterday, that, oh, my children like that. Ah, oh, I'm unhappy. I'm angry. So I asked them, how do you talk to your ch children? Of course it will show anger. They didn't realize that anger... Let me ask you, are you aware of your anger when you talk to your children and your husband or wife when you were unhappy? Are you aware of that anger? Yes. So is this something we need to take care of? Yes. But you say, He's, you know, he treat me badly, do I treat him nicely? That's unfair. Yeah. But actually, when you treat him nicely, Jesus li likes you, and he'll bless you more. And that's what I have been doing. Mm -hmm. And Jesus blesses me more, so I can do more for God. And I, it doesn't matter. Those people who say those things has no authority. And when I trust in God and forgive them and bless them, God gives more blessings to me. So that's the way to more blessings for me. And I've learned this teaching so I can teach many people. Okay. Do you think you can apply it when yes. someone yells at you? Yes. When someone curses you? Yes. Or do something bad? Oh, I want to say something. Yesterday there was one question about if the choir members have fornication. Now, now I realize sometimes in Liberia, people don't get married, not because they don't want to get married. It's because of the 150 US dollars certificate fee. Now, if that is the case, we'll suggest that I won't stop him serving, but I will tell him, don't have sex. And pray for provision from God so that you have the money to get married and then you have sex. So don't have sex and then uh, pray for provision and also we pray that the church will have the wisdom to guide the people to know how to make, pro make money. Now in this country, now what wisdom? You look at the people's needs, what needs they are. And then how can you make some money, earn money to work? Now you might say, how? Now I'm going to share this with you, it seems very strange that I will talk about something like this. For instance, you notice that people have to buy a certain thing. I know a lot of people sell water. They have to buy certain thing. But you don't have money to buy a lot of those, but you can buy one or two. And then you just sell it. You go to some place, you buy something. Or some kind of service people need. You notice some people need. For instance, some people need child care. And then you say to them, I'll take care of your children while you go to work, while you have to do something, and I'll take care of your children. So you have to be creative, to look around, what you can do. And if you can work on buildings, you can say to people, I will repair your house. And then, uh, so can you pay me when I rebuild your house, help you to build the house, make your house better, or do something in the house, I can help you to do something in the house. So, you be creative to find out what you can do. I know you don't have money to start a big business, but just a little money to buy something and then sell it. Then you can start to earn money. But that, that's wisdom. You need to ask God for that. So that you have the wisdom how to uh, make money so that you won't be so poor. And then so more, money, more people can make money so that you can have money to get married or other do, do other things. So we understand these people that need the problem, but then we say, because you're not married yet, so don't have sex. They have to repent of these sins 
but then we don't punish them because they don't have money. But we we tell them not to tell them not to have sex before they get married.